So now you're getting back into the game. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about, you know, a couple years ago, you wanted to get back in the game. Mm. Uh, you launched Cosm yep. with uh, Derek mm -hmm. Sabori. Yep. You know, how does one go from the super mm -hmm. punk brand mindset to this holistic spiritual concept? Yeah, well, I mean, the, I started practicing yoga in uh, like 2006. And it was, it was when I had, I, I had all kinds of injuries, a lot of broken bones and metal and things. And my doctor, Tim Brown, you know Tim, of mm -hmm. course, he basically prescribed it to me. And that's when I started practicing was for my injuries. And then, man, I just gravitated towards it in so many different ways. I came for the physical, I left with the mental. And um, so that was really the beginning of my journey there. And then when I went to Kauai, I got introduced to Ashtanga, which is another uh, type of yoga and really just got into it. And um, Terry's a, a Ashtanga pra practitioner as well. He, was, he would go there a lot too. And yeah, it, was just, it, it just made me feel really good. It helped my surfing and I was able to stay somewhat fit, you know, in the moment and, and then and mentally too, it really helped me. So when I moved back here and obviously during that time I got divorced and the whole thing fell apart that way too, but we moved back over here and, and the yoga really just, just really grounded me and helped me so much during that time in my life as well. Um, so then I had the bright idea to start a men's yoga clothing line and, and hit up Derek and he was working at Volcom at the time and basically pulled him out of there and said, let's go do this. And we started it and it was all great and, and just, uh, I'm super proud of what we built. But after about six months or maybe a year or so, I kind of found myself just a little bit back in the hustle again. I was like, I'm back in product again. Like, what did I just do to myself? And I'm the, the owner of this company and, you know, we got to go raise funds and do this whole thing. And, and I just, I kind of just found myself a little bit not, I wasn't totally stoked, you know, to be totally honest. And so then at that point, this is about a year ago that I was like, you know, it's, it's time for me to like go on another soul search mission <laughs> again. And uh, I, uh, I handed the keys over to Derek and he's, he's, gonna, he's gonna run it, which is amazing. I'm still involved with the brand. So it's all, it's in the best hands it could ever be in. And I, I think it has a lot of potential. But for me, you know, um, yeah, that time was, it was interesting about a year ago. It was kind of a, a, an interesting moment for me. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, you hand over the brand to Derek. Mm -hmm. And you know, you thought you could kind of get back into that fierce, yeah. fierce entrepreneurial mindset. Yeah. Didn't happen. No, it was, it was my ego, like straight up. It was like my ego, like crushed it with Volcom. I can do this again, you know. And just, it is difficult, like running a startup, especially a clothing company. And in that space of, I mean, the niche is incredible that we that we found, and it's sustainable. It's all very eco friendly, which is really what I believe in as well. And Derek, of course. But again, at the end of the day, it's still a product company building products and marketing them and selling them. And the other thing that was interesting too is when I was at Volcom, during our peak, there was no social media. There was no <laughs> Facebook, there was no Instagram, there was none of that shit. So <laughs> straight up, like I left in 2010 and that's when Instagram was born. So everything was print media, all of it. And the and web, you know, web was just starting to get going and it was wild west. Nobody knew what the hell was going on. People were charging a bunch of money. It was just, I mean, you know, the whole dot-com yeah. burst bubble. And um, so with this new endeavor, and our, our idea was to be direct to consumer only to keep, to keep the prices low, premium products, sustainable products for a lower price. Um, so with that, you got to have a digital marketing strategy. And I found myself like dealing with all that stuff and I was totally green. I didn't know how to do any of that stuff. You know, I know how to, I know how to build a vibe and, and have a vision, but when it comes down to pulling the levers and doing all this, sh I mean, it's technical stuff, yeah. you know? So I found myself there in the back end of the website and stuff. I'm like, I'm not having fun right now. Yeah. Like this isn't, this isn't my calling right now. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it's funny. Cause uh, you know, I look at, uh, you know, s some of the folks in here and you know, the age that, you know, we're all at and especially an old fart like me, but it's like, <laughs> and, you know, I, it, it's like, you know, I feel so fortunate to have grown up in the analog to the digital side, you know, where, you know, started out, you know, still having to 
write letters and correspond with people, licking a stamp and sending it and waiting for the response. And then, you know, fax machines came out and, you know, it's like, wow, this thing just came through the fax, you know, it was just mind blown. And then pagers and beepers and just yeah. all that cell stuff. Phones, just... Yeah, cell phones and then dot matrix printers. It's like, whoa, what is this? Look at all this stuff. Yeah. But you're right, you know, and I kind of found myself in the same boat, you know, trying to keep up with this digital you know, emergence. And then it's like you had e-commerce and all these things. And I saw a lot of brands in our industry struggle oh, big time. with that. Big you know, time. they did not want to let go of print oh. and print didn't want to let go of print. They didn't want to embrace this new digital movement that was coming. Yeah. And not, um, not, um, yeah. what was I going to say? Not only that with um, the digital thing with, oh, the retailers. Like when all the when all the brands were going direct, it was like the biggest deal. And and you know, obviously now it'd be the stupidest. I mean, you would never start a brand without being direct first. Yeah. You know. So then it was that transition, and everybody was getting. It was just crazy. All the retailers were getting pissed, and and we waited a long time. Volcom waited probably like one to two years, and everybody else had gone direct consumer, and we waited because we were you know we had all these relationships with our retailers. So it was interesting. Yeah, was that, was, that, that was definitely the Wild West. I remember uh, retailers wanting uh, exclusivity. They mm -hmm. wanted to be the online exclusive retailer, yeah. and that didn't work. And I think the brands were just chomping at the bits to go direct to consumer. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, and then it finally happened. And yeah. I think that was a bitter pill for some in the industry to swallow. Yeah, for sure. But um, so where's the brand stand now? So yeah. what's up with Cosm? Yeah, it's all, it's all, it's going, it's good. It's, um, it's in Derek's hands and we're just, you know, he's running with it and I'm just sort of advising and still part of the brand. So I just kind of 50,000 foot, you know, tell him what I think and help out. And yeah, it's, it's good. I'm, I'm, I'm stoked. I think it has a really, it's an incredible niche, like I mentioned before. And like Nike just came out with this whole like men's yoga thing going on. It's like, I mean, the thing has amazing potential. So hopefully he, he takes it under his wing and really goes for it. So yeah, they should have just bought you guys. Well, right? yeah, you not quite it. yet. Not We're not quite. big enough yet. <laughs> so 